talk about navigating through adulthood as Asian Australians. Today you're joined by Tiana and Amber Lou. Well, welcome to the show, um, Amber. Thank you so much um, for taking time out of your hectic touring schedule um, to join us today. Where are you joining us from? Um, right now, I am I just landed in Shenzhen, uh, and it's my last stop in, in China, so um, before we head off to Australia. Ah, amazing. Yes, you're so close yet, so far away. And yeah. time, what time is it in Shenzhen at the moment? It's, uh, it's 4 p.m. So, okay. we, yeah, okay. we chilling. Well, you're chilling. And are you feeling jet lagged? How are you feeling? How are you? Let's check um, in. The, 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 the days are blending in together. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, they have been for a while, but I just kind of go with it now. <laughs> yeah. So let's go on a bit of a journey. Uh, I want you to, you know, at the moment you're, you're in China, but I want you to pack us in your suitcase and I want us to hypothetically fly back um to LA which is I know where you were born and bred um take us back to what life and what home was like before you were mm. Amber Lou um Asia pop phenomenon <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop dude throw out those titles I'm just like oh god <laughs> all right Am- Amber Lou Chinese American gal uh life for me back at home was I-, I think I would like to say pretty normal you know my my family uh, and I grew up in, in like a suburb, uh, very just go to school. Um, I would come home, I would skate and I would play basketball. Um, I liked running a lot. I did a lot of sports growing up. Um, I liked studying as well. I really liked studying. Um, <laughs> so I, I was doing pretty well in that. Um, I think at certain points I was really that really odd kid that was just like I didn't really fit in a group I just kind of like migrated from one group to another Mm. uh on like the the, the, I guess the the sadder side of things you know picked on a little bit you know or a lot just by the way I looked um Mm. so uh there was that but um I definitely found like a a couple good really good friends of mine who we just started doing music together and um, I was like, hey, this is a guitar and like we could play it like this. And he's like, oh, this is really cool. That friend ended up turning into a guitar genius, by the way, and I still cannot play. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, I I really enjoyed uh, stud. I, I think a lot of um, my really good friends were just made through studying and um, and just kind of I don't know. I was, again, that weird kid that just tried to do everything because I just really wanted to find a place. Um, And I have uh, my sister, my older sister, who's who I at the time hated. (laughs) I like (laughs) hated her. That's always the way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, she and I, we fought a lot growing up, but we're super close now. Um, And she is, funny enough, the music genius. She plays like six instruments. She did perf- like she did ballet and tap and contemporary dance. Uh, she even at one point trained to be an actress. So like yeah, so she's super cool. My dad uh, was just always working, but he always kind of supported us in just being all like, do what makes you feel alive and um, what you're passionate about. But if you're gonna do something, do it with your whole heart. Uh, my mom, um, super supportive as well. Uh, she 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 was a singer. She's a singer at church, so she's very like very artsy Mm. she's like but does that bring you happiness are you happy though uh but at the same time um i think that a lot of my upbringing i felt very disconnected with my my at least my mom because Mm. uh my dad spoke fluent english because he 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 immigrated to the states when he was really young but my mom only spoke uh like very very basic english um or none at all the only things that she could say is like oh are you happy though like does that make you happy or are you hungry um never in like that uh yeah asian uh, classic asian sayings (laughs) yeah so she so she would uh be very supportive and like she i guess in the ways that she would support me were definitely asking those questions but you know me being a kid i'm like "Ah, i don't know yeah yeah sure yeah sure mom Mm -hmm. but uh she would always bring me to like practices or uh, pick me up from school things like that um in the ways that she can contribute and then when i was 
14, that's when I got scouted, and uh, I moved to Korea for like 12 years. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I think you said, you touched on a few fascinating things then. One of them is just about this idea of belonging, and you're talking mm-hmm. about how you were trying a lot of different things because you just, mm-hmm. I think... I think as kids or even in our adolescent years when we're searching for our true identity, yeah. we desperately want to assimilate or we desperately want to belong to something or someone. And I think especially mm. growing up with the Asian diaspora experience as well, it can be quite mm. challenging, right? And I can't imagine and you also then moving to a foreign country where you don't speak the language there as well. Mm. It's just like... How did you manage all of these different conflicting identities, I guess? Like, you know, Amber growing up in LA and then Amber growing up in in Korea. Was there a Mm -hmm. point where you started feeling yourself? And I'm I'm just interested in the journey that it took to get there. I think I didn't when I was younger, like pre-K-pop days was definitely, uh, I let my interests lead me. And it wasn't like, and then, yes, if um, I met some friends through that, then I would, you know, kind of mesh with them. However, you know, kids being kids, you know, we're, we're like, oh, your friend one day, you're, I don't know you the next kind of yeah. like, you know, kids are kind of cruel. I know. <laughs> very, very blunt and very, very honest. Um, but I think I always felt that, um, I don't know. I, I think maybe due to the fact that like I, I think generally most girls were uh, at the time were extremely feminine and just doing their thing. I didn't really relate with that. So I would always hang out with the guys. But at the same time, when I would be with the guys, I'm not one of the guys. Yeah. So it's like this, like, I don't know what I am, where I am type yeah. of thing. And um, I don't think I ever... I don't, I, it, it, if you like sit and think about that, like, oh, it does feel lonely. But then when I think I just really focused on, oh, but right now sports is what interests me, Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm going to go play sports. I'm not going to, even though I'm playing ball with the guys, I, that's not going to stop me from enjoying like playing basketball or in the ways that like, uh, I think I like to go shopping, but my, my guy friends don't like going shopping. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, my, my friends that were girls, they would like be like, Oh, like we should do this. And I'd be like, ah, sure. Why not let my, if, if at that moment someone accepts me, I just kind of went with it. Yeah. Um, and again, it letting it be more interest driven teenage Amber, li- baby Amber, just, just did stuff. Yeah. <laughs> But I think same thing with Korea too. Um, my my heart was telling me, oh, if you don't take this chance to go to Korea and in, at least try, and if, even if I fail, I just go back home, you know? So I really let that lead me. And it's at the same time, as you said, like going to a, a foreign country where it's, uh, you don't speak the language, it's not your culture, and just trying to relearn all that. At times too, there were definitely points of like, oh, I, I don't think anybody really understands mm. or I don't know it's a very niche problem <laughs> no, but I, I, I think I think it can be quite yeah. universal as well right like yeah. I think like it's quite common like not I'm not saying everyone has the same lived experience oh, yeah. as you because obviously you're a chameleon and I cannot feel I, I I just cannot believe that you were able to do that at, at such a young age as well mm. but I think there is that common kind of ground where people do feel lost or misunderstood or you know you kind of feel that fight with yourself on oh where do I belong or who who am I that type of thing and it's it's a nice thing when you get to the point where you're like okay like this is who I am yeah yeah and and when you're in and tell me about your experience in in um the the k-pop industry I Mm -hmm. I know like I've done a bit of research just about what it's like but I'd so interested to hear your own experience. Mm. Um, I know there's definitely a lot of highs, but there can be a lot of lows as well. And Mm -hmm. something that I have really taken out of watching your career is that you always like to talk about community and giving Mm. back and having a lovely, like mentoring. You're a mentor Mm -hmm. figure to a lot of people in the industry um, as well. So like, tell me a little bit about that period of time of, of your life. I think going back to like at the time, yeah, like my issues were very, I guess, quote unquote niche in the way that like there weren't many foreigners 
in mm. in in Korea training to be a um, K-pop idol at the time. Mm. And at the same time, I remember the day that I got in, I was one or t- like there were only two female foreign trainees. Mm. Um, the other one being Victoria, <laughs> who mm. was in, who was in my group. Yeah. Um, but she was already like shooting like commercials and doing a bunch of things, so she was not really there at the time. Um, so I was always going to the facility and hanging out with the guys. But then there was like a separation between the girls and guys back then stuff. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it'd be so funny. Like I remember, uh, uh, there's a time it was like my first week there. There was nobody at the training facility other than the foreigners, which was were like five guys and me, the only yeah. girl. But yeah. we could not be in the same room together. I guess. Okay. Again, I don't know why, but yes. Yeah. Um, there was a rule like that. But I'm not gonna practice on my own in just my first week there. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> so one of the one of the guy trainees, he was like, "Yo, yo, just come practice with me. I'll teach you a, a like a, a dance combo." I'm like, "Oh, I don't know how to dance. This will be great." And he he teaches me a set, and then because our training facility is in a basement, so you could hear people like going down the steps. And I literally, like, when we heard that, we literally bolted out and we, like, separated <laughs> immediately. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's just, like, we didn't, I, I, you know, we didn't want to get in trouble. Yeah. So, you know, I think at those times, like, again, I am 15. So, yeah. 15-year-old brain and, like, 15-year-old, like, drive of, like, I want to learn everything. I, I'm in a foreign country. I have no parents. This is great. But at the same time, I'm... Training to become a professional singer, dancer, whatever idol thing. So it didn't hit me till probably like six months in that I really missed home. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there was definitely a a very cutthroat like mentality of like, you just got to train. You just got to train. Just train. But at the same time, maybe it wasn't me seeking like, oh, I'm like seeking solutions. It was just more like I'm just venting out like, man, I really miss home. But then at the same time, the, the feedback that I would get is more, you're, you should be thankful for where you're, where you're at, you know, like in, in the, sorry, in that tone of like, why are you even thinking about that? You should be thankful yeah. for where you're at. You know, why yeah. should you even thinking? I was like, well, I, I also just kind of miss home. That's it. <laughs> I, I'm Of course, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> it's like, it's the duality of it, right? Because it's like, of course, yeah. like, I can really appreciate the opportunity I have, yeah. but also like it's so normal for the novelty of an excitement to wear off, and you're like, oh my god, I miss my parents, or oh my gosh, I miss yeah. my sister, even though like we fought a lot at the time or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, of course you can yeah. miss that because it's like all you've known, right? And you spoke a little bit about training. Was is training like you know just training in terms of singing and or writing and dancing, or, or what does that kind of involve? So. Each trainee has, and there's like sometimes at the most I've seen, there were like 50 of us. And then at the least there are like 20 of us. So people Mm. were like, but a lot of them like stayed for like years. I was definitely one of the newer trainees and Mm -hmm. even me debuting after a year and a half. That's a really quick turnaround, especially for a female trainee. Mm. Most female trainees, I think, train from like four to four to five years. But we're all given classes so and we're it's like blocked off for us so if you're in like a group or b group or um like we'll have our names on a board and there's like the acting class and it's so and so so and so so and so Mm. um dance class same thing so there's a lot of downtime and in those times you're kind of expected to be practicing like what you've been you've been working on um some days you don't even have class you just go and you just practice what you've been working on and then every week we would have a um like a like a a test where we're videotaped of like um our singing our dancing our acting our rapping or whatever it may be and then they give you feedback sometimes it's pretty harsh sometimes it's pretty okay well like i guess even if it was good it would be like "Mm, that was okay you know it was just very "Mm." (laughs) <laughs> not much of a reaction yeah <laughs> but yeah. As, as long as you weren't yelled at you're doing okay and then after that like I think every three or six months you would have a big showcase and that's when the company executives come and all like the you know important people come to really like see what's been going on I, I wouldn't say that the training part was itself was hard because I I rather just really like I really enjoyed it mm. but I think it was the amount of like again I'm a kid yeah. and 
I'm also just like, now I'm just like in a building 24 right. seven and I'm just only expected to do this. Um, and I think I might be downplaying it right now just because I don't really remember as much, but I did really have a sense of like heaviness, mm. um, a lot of pressure. Also that just constant like, oh, I could be let go at any time. Right. Kind of mentality. At the same time, like, and this is for me uh, relearning these things. Like, I, I went through, um, I, I still go to therapy, but I, like, relearned a bunch of things and kind of really reflected on my years of, like, I guess how I basically grew up and how it's affecting me today as a person. Like, I'm super hard on myself to a point where I'm, like, losing my brains because, like, I, I think I just never really took the time to say, like, Amber, wow, you did a good job. Mm. you didn't have time to no i didn't have time to and even if small mistakes when i performed in the past couple of years it's just like I did one mistake and it well something wasn't perfect and i would just lose my mind and i would just like go into a full like anxiety episode mm. um a lot of these things would just be really ingrained into my body and i didn't even know that was going on so yeah. so again like i i I think there's like small minute things that just kept building up over the years and especially putting yourself out there at such a young age, which I think a lot of child stars growing up kind of like get trapped in because I actually got a lot of um, comfort actually listening to a lot of people who started as child actors or as child celebrities and then mm -hmm. them growing up and then whether they're in the industry or not, them kind of coming kind of full circle around with their experiences. I watched a lot of those types of documentaries and I was just like, whoa so i'm not alone in this yeah so that's so yeah. much no that that must be so comforting it's comforting when you feel like someone can relate to you there's that sense of yeah. like okay yeah you're not alone you're not as isolated um yeah but i i think it's amazing how you talk about mental health so openly because mm -hmm. just in society in general like especially in asian households mm -hmm. mental health is very rarely yeah. spoken about people rarely share their emotions because mm -hmm. we've been conditioned to and i think also like when you were talking about how you felt so like that thought or that if you made a mistake that would linger i think that's mm -hmm. also like a product of your environment right you're you're conditioned to feel mm -hmm. like you've got to be perfect or you this opportunity could be taken away from you at any point in time mm -hmm. i love how you as i said i love how you you're very open about your feelings but i'm wondering if that has that been something that you've always had or is it something that now as an adult because you've gone through therapy you've been able to reflect mm. and you want to share that a bit more I've always wanted I think especially when um I think when you talked about like I thank you for saying it too that like I've always been someone about community mm. and I think that's that's something that saved my life because when I was in Korea and I knew that more foreign trainees were were being picked up by different companies we kind of it wasn't that we made a community it just became a community because yeah. like people knew like just let's go to amber's amber's yeah. place let's just like go chill there and I, I always wanted to open up my space if it because you know sometimes like living in dormitories even though it's you know again living with your bandmates it's great but you mm -hmm. don't have a place of your own and you're also in a foreign country and yeah. you kind of just want to get away from something for a bit like I understand that feeling so I was always telling my friends I was like hey if you need to just come over just to kind of like blow off steam or just have like a place to just kind of relax like feel free and then like that kind of just became like my place to a lot yeah. of people. I think the ways that I've alone and, and like really trapped, I just wanted somebody else that was going through some, maybe even something similar to me to also know that they weren't alone in it. Yeah. And that's why I also think that now throughout the years and after going indie and, and just doing my own thing and really kind of being in tune with myself, number one, therapy in the Asian community is just not really, it's very mm. looked down upon. It's seen as a weakness, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I think that we're all human and that's something that I'm always repeating to myself every day that I'm a human being. Yeah. yeah. You might think of me as an idol. You might think of me as a pop star or I have all these things, but I'm a human being and I also make a lot of mistakes and I, but for Amber Lou, yeah, I'm always willing to just try and get better and better. But at the same time, like I can't put such a heavy weight on my shoulders when I also just need to kind of like chill out a little bit. I, I don't know. I just want to bring back the humanness 
we are all human. We are all um, just trying to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> like everybody's like, Amber, you got everything so together. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> but I, I, I love that you're so open about it and that you share that because yeah. it makes it more relatable, right? It's like when people, that's why people gravitate towards you. I think it's not like, of course you're massively talented, but I think mm. more than that, when you showcase your vulnerability like people really mm. re- resonate with that and, and they love it so thank you for being so open oh, no, about your I... journey like it's refreshing and it's also mm. really i think really good for people to like hear that yeah. they're not alone as oh, well no, thank you i really appreciate that um Fiona. i'm just like i think the way that i really re-centered myself was number one it's like who am i singing to and I think that was a huge struggle for me the past like couple of years because as you said, like I could totally not share all these things and feel unattainable or something. But mm. I think always just being honest to people just about how I feel has always just been a part of me. Like my, that's why like my whole crew is like I'm like like guys, let's do it. Ah, yeah. Like I'm just or like guys, I'm not I'm feeling a little down right now. Just like let, let me chill out for a bit. They're like oh yeah, that's cool. Like. I think we have that camaraderie just because I I try to be I try, I always try to be honest honest as I can but at the same time I always want to make sure that knowing that I have a platform and that I have people who I guess technically look up to me and balance that out with not feeling so pressured <laughs> cuz I'm just like well, I was going to say, like, you spoke a little bit about, sorry, you spoke a little bit about it before, but this yeah. burden that you must feel, like, I can just imagine people say, like, reading out your stats and being like, oh, Amber's yeah. got like a gajillion followers and she's, got, yeah. you know, touring worldwide and she's got all these fans and stuff like that. And I can just imagine that that adds a lot of, bur- like, it can be, of course, it's a blessing mm-hmm. um, because you're yeah, doing what you love. But then also, I can I can understand how it would feel. It's just even more pressure on yourself mm-hmm. that you've you've got you're in this limelight. And how do you mm-hmm. deal with that sense of I, I can't imagine <laughs> what that's like to have the whole world watching you. Like if you think yeah. about it, I don't I, I can't remember what your star was. I think maybe like 17 million or something like that. That's like a country of, of uh, that's a population of people. That is insane. Like how do you? I, how, even how when does, you say how, it, I, I get stressed out. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't even no, stress no, you no, out. No, no, like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm totally like, kidding. I, I'm like, how does that even? I don't. How do you deal with that? As you said, number one, again, it's practicing gratitude. That like, wow, I'm able to just do what I love and also just feel that love and receive that love back. But number two, it's also bringing it back to younger Amber. What did younger Amber need? What what did Am- younger Amber want um, in, a, I guess, a role model? And I think when I answered that question, it was someone who's just genuine and honest about, you know, their struggles and like their, their, their strengths. Um, someone who's just human, a human being, because I think not, not every, I, I, and this is something that I talk to um, my friends who are artists, like in the generation after me, mm. they're always like, oh man, like Amber must've been so hard for you back then that, in that time in K-pop. And cause I'd be sharing about like what yeah. we would do in our routine, I guess, promotion scheduling. And I would hear yeah. about theirs and, and, um, and I'm like, dude, but when I hear about yours, I feel stressed out that you have to constantly be pushing out different types of content and the social media game and again numbers and analytics and then again how that starts affecting us as humans of we're like oh my gosh my follower like because there's like bots on on all Uh, these sites at certain point like your follower count drops or like your Mm -hmm. video didn't perform better than the last one and it's like okay are we now equating people to numbers and I don't think that that's very healthy And that's something that I relate to, too. Like, when I, when I, like, oh, when I see a number, I'm just like, oh, I get super stressed out. Like, oh, we didn't hit the quota. Oh, my gosh, blah, 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 blah. Like, I think that's just how, when my relationship now with the internet is, is that it's become so unhealthy. And and I'm like, wow, I think a lot of people are also, like, dealing with this, too. So um, I think in some ways, it's just, uh, sorry, I I know I tangented off a lot. No, so fine. Yeah, I love a tangent. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> but I, I guess at the same time, just like when I deal with all these things, just again, to remember that I'm just a human being, um, life is a, is it, it's a wave. It's, it has ups and downs. And I think to always, and this is something I learned in therapy, to always be so anxious about the future is not the way to live. 
-hmm. and that just really takes away from you focusing on the right now and how you feel right now and that's something that I've been practicing at least for the past year like trying to tune myself into this moment like like yesterday I was having a mental breakdown about like like oh my gosh my iPad wasn't turning on the way that I wanted it to but like I have to like remind myself like hey like Amber you're anxious right now it's okay it's just an iPad you can definitely turn it on the way you want. And I'm like, wait, yes. Ah, okay. Yes. And it's always just like around, again, how to center yourself in the now, yes. I think is what's given me a lot of peace. And like, even at my concerts, at my shows, I could be thinking about like, okay, but I have to tomorrow I have to go to this place and then this place. But after I tune all of that out and I just focus on, oh my gosh, this fan in front of me is screaming her lungs out. Let me vibe with her for a little bit. And it's never yeah. rehearsed. I just go out and do it. Yeah. And I think just living in the moment has been just so priceless for me. Oh, I yeah. can imagine. It's so freeing, isn't it? And yeah. I, I, I think I love, I, and this ties back to everything that you just said, but before you mentioned about like, you just remember who you're singing for. Um, mm. and that there, there, it's not a number. There's like humans behind that. And I guess when yeah. you're on stage, you can actually see, yeah. oh my God, like these are the people that, um, are, are they here for me? Like this, this yeah. is for me. Like, that's crazy. Stop it. Yeah. Like guys, <laughs> but come like, um, yeah. speaking of touring and, and, and so sorry, I know that, um, we're kind of a bit over time, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of wrap oh, it no. up soon. I'm having fun. Um, oh, <laughs> good. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. So yes, you're on, you're on tour now. You're at the moment, you're, you're going to come to Australia soon. We're so yes. excited to have you, um, on our shores. And I, I think you just did, you've been doing a bit of a, uh, Asia stint at the moment. Yes. What is it like? Like, what are you most excited about coming to Australia for? You know, is there is there anything that you remember from your last time here? I think you last time you were here, it was part of a Asia Pop Festival. Yeah. Um. What can what can the fans expect? Well, my shows are all very very. It's there. There's a there's a there's a progression. Like you have to stop. Maybe we have a set list, but. It does get a little bit unhinged sometimes. <laughs> Yesterday, I totally forgot and I just changed the set list by accident. <laughs> were you banned? Like, what the fuck, Amber? <laughs> like... No, they, they, they were all like, yeah, well, I'm down. Okay. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> but th- my goal this whole tour was number one, just to get back in front of and meet my fans. Mm. And that's why Australia, I was like, they're like, hey, you want to go? I'm like, yes, let's yeah, do it. I've yeah. like... Um, yeah, when I went to Melbourne that time, it was my first time, and it was for a festival, so I was super happy to be out there, but I was just all like, oh, but they've never seen Amber show. Yeah. And yeah, me at festivals, like, you, you get, like, a, a taste of it, but, like, ah. I'm pretty stupid when it comes to my shows. I, I, I'm just, like, I roll around on the floor, like, I'm just, yeah. like... I don't know. I'm just dumb as hell. So no, I, we, I just we always love try. The unhinged, we love the unhinged energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, and I don't know. I, I just really want to, again, like I've seen people online. Um, I had like, I have like my discord group that I do gaming with and I've been meeting them. Like I'm, they're like, Oh, I'm so-and-so in your discord. I'm like, what? Oh. I, I spent like, four hours with you building stuff in Minecraft, you know? And it's just kind of going full circle. So to always just kind of put, because, you know, every city has their own vibe. Mm. So I also hear there's a little bit of an Australian city rivalry. Oh, um, Melbourne is where it's at, okay? Melbourne supremacy, Amber. <laughs> it's Melbourne. It's Mel- Not that I'm biased, but Melbourne is on top. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It's always Melbourne. All right. Okay. Okay. I. I. Okay. Not to. Not to shit on any of the other states because Australia. <laughs> all of our states are amazing, but if I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I reckon Melbourne has a friendlier crowd. Melbourne. If it's mm. Melbourne versus Sydney, that's that's my opinion. That's just my opinion. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You'll just have all to right. come and find out. But um, I'm excited to hear. Like, if you if you notice anything different about the crowds and that type of mm. thing, yeah, that would be good. Your opinion is definitely heard, and I will be I will be feeling it out when I'm in each city. I'm like, hmm, all right. I, I always tell the the fans um, when the when the concert starts, like the only one rule at my show is to be yourself here. So if you want to dance, if you want to be loud, if you want to be quiet, like do that. Like yeah. I'm even if I say hands up, 
you don't have to listen to me. Like yeah. just, just become, I just want like my concert to be a comfortable space for everybody where people don't have to feel like they have to act or be in with whatever's going on. Just like mm-hmm. enjoy it. Cause you know, you had a, you had a hard, hard week at work or at school, like let loose here. Like I'm not going to expect you to act a certain way. So that's something that I would like to do at my shows. And on top of that, like, I'm sorry for this year of the tour. Um, I was able to rework the set list a little bit, and uh, we're playing some demos. Yeah, so it'd be we're just teasing some stuff, and yeah, um, I've definitely added some bits in where my band members now like we have like a a little, I guess a I would like to call it the, the sexy catwalk. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have some we have, but that comes randomly. So okay. Well, we'll look out for it. We'll see. We'll look out for it. We'll see what happens. (laughs) We'll see how you feel. Thank you so much for your time. I've had a blast talking to you and getting to know you more. Um, One last question I want to ask that underpins the heart and soul of our podcast Mm -hmm. is what makes you unapologetically Asian? Mm, Oh, and my fans know this. My undying love for boba. I can have like three or four. I, I do not do this anymore, but I can have three or four bobas in one day and be like, I want more. I can oh eat boba by itself. Um, like my mom growing up, the way that I actually got introduced to boba was my mom would just make a bowl of it and coat it in honey and brown sugar. And I would just eat it as a dessert like that. Oh my so gosh. get all my level boba fiends because you ain't topping my boba eating skills. Ah, oh, I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Amber. I really, really appreciate our chat and um, hope to see you when you come to Australia. No, thank you so much. Are you, you going to come to the show? Um, hopefully, hopefully I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to make it. Um, but my, one of my team members, she absolutely loves you as well. So yeah, dope, dope. I, I definitely want to come, um, and, and see that sexy catwalk. <laughs> what <laughs> well, a note to I'll, end I'll on. I'll keep it what in my just for end. you. Thank you. Oh, well, I'll, we'll see, we'll see you soon. And, um, again, just thank you so much for your time. Um, and thank you everyone for listening at home. I hope you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did. And please support Amber. Where can the listeners find you? On all my socials, I am Amber Lou, uh, Spotify Amber Lou. I am Amber Lou. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Amber Lou, Amazing. very easy. <laughs> Amber Lou, love it. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. All right. no, thank you. Thank you, Tiana. If you like what you listen to, you can find us on your favorite podcasting platform. Remember to support us there. Um, you can also find us on social media or at unapologetically AZN on Instagram and unapologetically Asian on TikTok and YouTube. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Sending love and good vibes. Bye.